Today we shall start a new topic that is spectroscopy and in this video I shall introduce you to the term spectroscopy, what exactly it is, etc. Now, spectroscopy helps us to understand the molecular structure in uh, almost every aspect of a molecule like bond length, bond angle, uh, bond strength uh, and then uh, chemical structure, chemical properties. Uh, if we are taking about a molecule then I mean now uh, in a molecule, what is the functional group present, etc. A lot of information we get from spectroscopic analysis. Now we should know what exactly is spectroscopy. Now, spectroscopy is a study of the effect of interaction between electromagnetic radiation and matter. That means what is happening when electromagnetic radiation hits a matter, hits a substance hits an atom or hits a molecule, alright. So all these effects uh, are studied in spectroscopic studies. We have got a different uh, uh, branches of spectroscopies, we will we'll see all those things. Uh, so when uh, basically when a matter is hit by an electromagnetic uh, radiation, either emission can happen or absorption can happen, okay. Now uh, when uh, either the emission or absorption happens, something happens within the molecule or within the atom, within the matter. Something happens between the incident radiation and the matter. We are going to study that. And uh, when emission happens, now that is, uh, I mean, uh, the study or uh, the spectroscopic studies, when emission happens, we call it as emission spectroscopy and when absorption happens, we call it as absorption spectroscopy. So basically, these are the two main types of spectroscopy, emission spectroscopy and absorption spectroscopy. There are different branches or different types within emission spectroscopy, different types within absorption spectroscopy. Alright, so uh, try to understand spectroscopic studies or spectroscopy is the study of the interaction between electromagnetic radiation and matter. Now let's first see what is electromagnetic radiation. Now you may be familiar with this term electromagnetic radiation. Now, electromagnetic radiation is uh, nothing but waves which carry energy. Right? Now, uh, uh, these uh, electromagnetic wave radiations are also said to have uh, dual nature, that is, the, it, it, uh, it exhibits both wave particle duality. We will see that. Now, uh, if we can represent diagrammatically in electromagnetic radiation, it will appear something like this. That is, there are waves uh, which has an electric component, electric field component and a magnetic field component. And this electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other and they are perpendicular to the direction of the wave. See, this is the direction of the wave. We have the electric field perpendicular to the direction of the wave. We have magnetic field perpendicular to the direction of the wave. And both electric field and magnetic field are perpendicular to each other. Alright. Now, in this uh, wave, uh, you can see peaks here and then uh, you have a minima also troughs. Now this distance between any two peaks, this distance, any two peaks or any two troughs, now this distance is called the wavelength or length of the wave represented as lambda. Okay, so lambda is the distance between any two peaks. Now this is called a one full wave. The distance from one peak to another peak is called a one full wave. Okay, so lambda is the wavelength. Now we have another term that is the frequency, mu. Frequency of the wave, it is represented or designated as mu. Now it is the number of full wavelengths per unit time. That means how many such waves of such wavelengths are formed per unit time. Okay, so if the lambda is big, large, that is if the wavelength is large, automatically the frequency will be small because the number of wavelength per unit time will be small. Or if the lambda is small, then the frequency will be large. So you can say that lambda and frequency are inversely proportional to each other. 
Okay, lambda is inversely proportional to the frequency. And for every wave, the lambda, the product of the lambda and frequency is equal to its velocity. Okay, for every wave, the product of lambda and frequency is a constant and that is its velocity. And for light, that is 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meter per second. All right. So, uh, uh, this you must remember, these uh, terminologies you must remember. Now, let's see what are the characteristics of electromagnetic radiation. You know, we have the electromagnetic radiation representation over here. Now, we can say that electromagnetic radiations are waves produced by the motion of electrically charged particles. Okay, waves produced by the motion of electrically charged particles. So that means they are waves, they have they are particles also. So these electrically charged particles are termed photons, you may be knowing this. So you can say that they show wave particle duality. They show dual nature, wave particle duality. That's one characteristic feature of electromagnetic radiation. Now, they are associated with oscillating electric and magnetic fields perpendicular to each other and also perpendicular to the direction of the propagation. Okay, so that we had explained earlier. Thirdly, all kinds of electromagnetic radiation travel with the same velocity in vacuum. Remember, in vacuum, okay, not all, everywhere, but in vacuum, all the radiations have the same velocity equal to the velocity of light. That is 3 Newton raised to power of 8 meter per second. Okay, so remember this velocity is, I mean all radiations have the same velocity only in vacuum. Okay, not outside. That concept you must be, must be clear to you. Now, for a wave, we have seen that nu is equal to c by lambda. We have seen nu lambda is equal to c, so you can put frequency nu equal to c by lambda. And this term, 1 by lambda, that is reciprocal of wavelength is called the wave number. Okay, reciprocal of the wavelength is called the wave number. Now, the energy of radiation, energy of any electromagnetic radiation E is equal to H nu, put forward by Einstein. And H nu can be put as Hc by lambda. So, using this equation, we can determine, we can predict the energy of the various radiations, electromagnetic radiations, if we know the wavelength. Alright, so uh, these are the characteristic features of uh, electromagnetic radiation. Now, here the H is the Planck's constant, which is equal to 6.62 into 10 raised to minus 34 joule second. And the energy calculated like this will be equal to, it will be in joules. Alright, now, uh, when we take the, consider the case of light, and the light is also an electromagnetic radiation. Now, light is a composite light, isn't it? I mean, uh, the sunlight which we see or which we feel, or the visible light is not composed of a single wavelength or, or composed of a wave of a single frequency or single wavelength or single energy. It is composed of different waves of different wavelengths, right? And light is part of the electromagnetic radiation, it is an electromagnetic radiation. Now since, uh, how do we know that light is a composite uh, wave or uh, it is composed of different waves is because we have the rainbows. And uh, we know that uh, uh, when we pass light through prism, we get different colors. We, each color has got a different wavelength and wave energy and frequency. Okay, so uh, light is uh, made of waves of different frequencies and different wavelength. And so is the electromagnetic radiations. We've said, we have said that all electromagnetic radiations do not have the same frequency, do not have the same wavelength. Okay, so this, this, this picture which shows different electromagnetic radiation in their, uh, uh, or, I mean different electromagnetic radiations of different wavelengths together. Now that is called the electromagnetic spectrum. 
Okay, so electromagnetic spectrum is the uh, range or is the spectrum which shows the range of frequencies of uh, light in, or uh, radiations in electromagnetic radiation. Okay, or we can say that electromagnetic spectrum is a distribution of electromagnetic waves according to their frequencies into different regions. Okay, I repeat, electromagnetic spectrum is the distribution of electromagnetic waves according to their frequencies or wavelengths into different regions. So, uh, we, we start from a longer wavelength to shorter wavelength in electromagnetic spectrum, or vice versa you can do. Okay, so you, here you can see in the spectrum, you have radio waves, you have microwaves, you have infrared, and here you have the visible UV visible wave, uh, uh, visible light, okay, UV light, X-ray, radi X rays, gamma rays. So you can say radio waves are of longer wavelength, sh uh, shorter frequencies, lower energy. E is equal to H nu, isn't it? Long, short, shorter the frequency, smaller the frequency smaller will be the energy. Longer the wavelength, smaller will be the energy. E is equal to Hc by lambda. When we go to gamma radiations, they are high energy radiations. See, you can see here, their wavelengths are short. Okay, and our visible light falls in between. Now here you have a visible light. Red is uh, of uh, la lower energy when compared to violet. So in WIBGR, Violet is having high energy, uh, uh, so high energy radiation when you compare it with, with the red. Okay, now in spectroscopy, we will be discussing about how a molecule will interact when you uh, uh, when you strike the molecule or the matter with visible light or with ultraviolet light or with microwave radiations or with infrared radiations, etc. Okay, so in spectroscopy, we will be discussing about how the molecule will interact with all these different types of electromagnetic radiations. Okay, radio waves, microwaves, IR, infrared, visible light, UV, X-ray, gamma, etc. Okay, so spectroscopy is nothing but the study of the uh, interaction of uh, electromagnetic radiation with matter and you need to understand that the relation between the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation and energy, frequency of the radiation and energy etc. Okay, using those equations which I had mentioned earlier. Okay, so keep all these in mind. We need uh, these, uh, uh, these pieces of uh, knowledge to move further in spectroscopic studies and spectroscopic analysis. Hope it's clear to you. If you have any clarifications, please feel free to ask. Thank you.